So we're gonna have a look at a topic called integration. Now, many of you will have heard of this before. Maybe if you've got anyone in your families who have done maths A level, or maybe you've just heard it from maybe teachers have mentioned it before as well. Um, but integration is literally just the reverse process of differentiation, okay? In fact, integration, when it was initially conceived of as an idea by mathematicians, they actually didn't call it integration, they called it anti-differentiation, literally meaning the reverse process of integration. And that's how I want us to start off thinking about what integration is. It's about undoing some of the idea, some of the things you do with differentiation. Um, so you can see here, if we've been, if we had a particular function and we have differentiated it to get this, we're trying to say what was the curve that we had there. Okay, we're trying to say if we were going to go backwards from being given this as the answer from differentiation, integration is the name that we would use to say we are going to go backwards to say what was the original function. We're then going to use some of these ideas to do something about finding the area underneath the curve, which probably sounds a bit random, like why is that going to have anything to do with an area under a curve? But we're going to try and work out why this process is related to areas under curves. And that should also then be making us think about things to do with mechanics, where we've been interested in the area under a curve because it was related to things like the distance or the displacement that, was, um, that a particular particle might have, have moved. And then we'll do some more complicated things to do with the areas under curves. But I envisage this taking maybe two, possibly three kinds of lessons that we've got. Before I go to the next page, though, um, can anybody just explain how would you differentiate a particular function? How would you differentiate something, I don't know, like uh, x to the power of 5? What's just the general process if you're going to differentiate that with respect to x? Yeah, Ishraq? Yep. Yes, good. So you would, so I sometimes say you bring the power down and then you multiply uh, and then you reduce the power by one. OK, that's just all the processes that you will have come across when you were doing some of these things with Mr. Udin before. So we're only going to be thinking about integration as the reverse of differentiation, as anti-differentiation. Um, so integration is the opposite of differentiation. As I've said here, it's also called anti-differentiation. So let's remind ourselves about what we do as the process for differentiating. Here is the particular function that we are going to try and differentiate. The first step that we do is we multiply by the power, and then we reduce the power by 1 to get 15x squared. We can see how the 5 is multiplied by the 3, and we've reduced it from an x cubed to an x squared. So if we want to do anti-differentiation, we have to do those processes in the reverse order and inversing those functions. So instead of doing uh, multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1, the first thing you do is you increase the power by 1, and then you divide by the new power. Okay, It has to be dividing by the new power, as that was the power that you originally were multiplying by. So for integration, you're now going to be having this process in your head of thinking, I'm going to increase the power by 1, and then I'm going to divide it by the new power that I've just increased it to. But there is an added complication. Because this question says, find out what y is when dy by dx is equal to 3x squared. OK, well, let's add 1 to the power and divide it by this power. So if we added 1 to this power here, we'd get x cubed. And if we then divided the whole thing by our new power, we just get x cubed, because the 3 factor is going to disappear there. <coughs> But there are other functions which also would have differentiated to 3x squared. This is a really important bit here. So we thought that the answer was going to be y equals x cubed. But actually, if I had y equals x cubed plus 1, or y equals x cubed minus 4, if I differentiated this, what would happen to the plus 1, or what would happen to the minus 4? They just disappear. When you, when you differentiate constant terms, they just disappear. So we thought that y was equal to x cubed. But it didn't have to be y equals x cubed. It could have been y equals x cubed plus 1, y equals x cubed minus 4. So I've said clearly we could have had any constant as it disappears upon differentiation. So actually, the function that we will say that y should have been before it was differentiated is y equals x cubed plus c. 
and we call this extra constant that we add on at the end the constant of integration. You have to have that plus C at the end because it's the constant of integration. And you can just check that this works. If you were going to differentiate this function that you'd got here, you would differentiate the x cubed to get 3x squared. And when you differentiate a constant, it disappears. So that's why we have to, when we're integrating, we put in this plus c at the end, because that could always have been there beforehand. But if it was differentiated, it would have disappeared. So we're going to just do some of these um, practice things that we would have here. Okay? I want to find out what was the original function when dy by dx, when the function differentiated with respect to x, was 4x cubed. So I think the original function should be increasing the power by 1. So it's going to increase to x to the power of 4. And then dividing by the new power. So I've increased the power by 1 and divided by the new power, which clearly I can just see is x to the power of 4. You probably didn't need to write this stage out, did you? I'm only writing this out because it's the very, very first example that we're doing here. But don't forget, there's got to be a plus c. So that's what my exam note is there for, saying, well, not for that bit. You should always include the plus c for indefinite integration. I'm not going to tell you what indefinite integration is at the moment, because then I'll have to explain what definite integration is, and that's a whole lesson. But at the moment, this is called indefinite integration, where there's a plus c that we have. OK, so this second one that I've got here, I have um, x to the power of 5. Remember, integration, increase the power. I always remember increase goes with integration because they start with the same letter. Differentiation has decreased, so it's you decrease the power. So I'm going to increase the power to 6, and I'm going to divide by the new power, which is a sixth x to the power of 6 plus c. And I have said here, you could also write this as x to the power of 6 over 6, or a sixth x to the power of 6. They obviously mean the same thing. It just, math just depends on what the question looks like, depends on what your personal preference is for this kind of things that we've got here. OK. This is where things get a little bit trickier, because we're going to have fractional powers here. And I want you to try and get good at adding 1 onto fractions without having to use your calculator. So here, I have dy by dx is 3x to the power of a half. Obviously, that's meant to be the power, but it's quite hard to get those powers typed in nice and small. So I know it's going to be x to the power of, what would the new power be? 3 over 2. Three over two. Now, we're going to be doing dividing by the new power, which is dividing by 3 over 2. What is dividing by 3 over 2 the same as? Good. So actually, we are going to multiply by the reciprocal. So although we said our pattern was increase the power and divide by the power, I think a better way of thinking about this might be increase the power and multiply by the reciprocal. Increase the power, and we multiplied by the reciprocal. Increase the power, multiply by the reciprocal. Increase the power to 3 over 2, and we're going to multiply it. So we have the 3 that was already there, and we're going to multiply it by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 3. And what does this then simplify to? Obviously, this bit here should have had a plus c in, sorry. And that should be a plus c, which is the same thing as 2x to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. So the bit that I've got written is this tip inside this box here is to kind of go against what some people might get taught by their tutors or what you might see in the textbook. 
what we sometimes see is that people get shown to increase the power to 3 over 2. So I'm just going to write this bit out a little bit bigger. They might say, OK, we're going to increase the power to 3 over 2, and then we're going to divide it by 3 over 2. And that looks really, really messy because you're dividing with a fraction that's in there as well. So I've said here, this is ugly, and students then often struggle to simplify this thing. So instead, remember back to GCSE, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So that's why we've got this thing here. Instead of dividing by 3 over 2, it is better to think about multiplying it by 2 over 3. This is not so good. This is a much better way of doing this. If you can do that, you're going to just find integration so, so easy for those things that we've got there. So I'm going to do um, a few more of these on the next page, I think. And then you're going to do some practice for me. OK. So these ones might require a bit of manipulation, first of all, because we don't normally like differentiating things that look like that. We like to put them in their index form, in their indices form. What is 4 over the square root of x in index form? 4x to the power of minus a half. OK, so if we're going to integrate this, if we're going to find out what y is equal to, we're going to do that reverse process. First thing I need to do is to add 1 to the power. What happens when you add 1 to minus a half? Just becomes a half. And we said that you're going to divide by a half. But remember, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Good. The reciprocal of a half is 2. So we're going to multiply it by 2. So we have the 4. We're going to multiply it by 2 plus c. So we get 8x to the half plus c. How do you think you could verify that this was the correct answer? By doing what? You could differentiate it. OK, let's just really quickly, if we differentiate this, you would have 8 multiplied by the power, which is 4, and reduce the power by 1. So you get 4x to the minus a half. And the c part, when you differentiate that, would completely disappear. OK, the next one is already in index form. We've got 5x to the minus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the power from minus 2 to minus 3 or minus 1. Minus 1, we're increasing the power. So it's going to go up to minus 1, and we'll multiply by the reciprocal of minus 1, or divide by minus 1. All that's going to do is make it become negative, like this. All that's going to do is make it become negative, and it looks like this. <coughs> Let's just double check that works when you differentiate it you would have minus 5 multiplied by minus 1, which gives you positive 5. And then you reduce the power by 1, and you get 5x to the minus 2. So that one works. The fractional ones are normally the more annoying ones. But if we use our trick of multiplying by the new reciprocal, it's going to be dead easy. So here, we've got 4x to the 2 over 3. Well, let's deal with the power first of all. The 2 over 3, when you increase the power by 1, what will that be? 5 over 3. 2 over 3 plus 1 is 2 over 3 plus 3 over 3. So you get 5 over 3. And what do we have to then multiply by? 3 over 5. We multiply by the reciprocal. So we've got the 4 that was there before multiplied by 3 over 5 plus c, which is the same as 12 over 5 x to the 5 over 3 plus c. I always forget to do the plus c. So if you see me forgetting to do it, make sure you tell me, OK? And I'm just going to double check that that one works by differentiating it. So let's just have a quick think about if we were going to differentiate this. Well, you've got the 12 over 5. You multiply it by the power, which is 5 over 3. And you reduce the power by 1, so you get 2 over 3. How does this simplify? Yep, so you just get 4x to the 2 over 3. Or you could see that those 5s cancelled there. 
So you get 4x to the 2 over 3, which is exactly the thing that we wanted, OK? This one, it might not be very clear, but this is a minus 2 over 7. So we've got dy by dx equals 10x to the minus 2 over 7. So we're going to, first of all, increase the power. Now, I want you to try and do this as much as possible without using a calculator. So you've got minus 2 over 7. What happens if you have, add 1 to minus 2 over 7? 5 over 7. So it becomes 5 over 7. And remember, you now need to do what with the 5 over 7? Good. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of that, which is 7 over 5. So we've got the 10 multiplied by 7 over 5 plus c. And you can think about cancelling some of these things here. So I would probably think about cancelling the 5 with the 10 and replacing the 10 with a 2. So you get 14x to the 5 over 7 plus c. And again, you could check that that would work. Differentiating it, you'd get 14 times the power, reducing the power by 1, and that will simplify to 10. 10x to the minus 2 over 7. So if, if at some point in today's lesson you say, sir, can you check if I've done this right? What do you think I'm going to say to you? Differentiate it, and you can see if you've got it right. Okay, But that's on the basis that I, I'm hoping you know how to differentiate <laughs> successfully. So on the next page here, I'll leave this page up. You've got one, two, three, four, five of these to have a go at. And after you've done those five, I want you to read that little note that is there at the bottom um, just to make you think about some of these other things that will be coming up. So I'm going to leave it on this page that we've got here. And then you're going to try those. And we'll come back in just a couple of minutes.